Yes, uh, and that's pretty remarkable too. Uh, and of course, including the last two women's basketball championships. Uh, we have uh, also had the best winning percentage of the men's basketball tournament over the over the last five years. And and right now, with the with the coaching situations that we've had shifting around, we've got we've got five uh, five guys in the league that have led teams to the final four. That's it's really quite remarkable. So, uh, in addition to all that, uh, I am uh, preparing to, to leave and put on my U.S. Olympic Committee board member hat in the next few days. I'm heading to London, and uh, the representation of our conference uh, in the uh, in not only on the U.S. Olympic team but on uh, the Olympic teams of uh, of many other uh, nations uh, is really going to be spectacular. It's uh, it's an exciting thing to have 93 athletes that are uh, participating at the very highest level. And, you know, it's um, the opportunity for a young man or a young woman to participate in the Olympic Games is, is certainly second to none. But just as we aren't here to produce professional athletes as a, as a principal undertaking, we also aren't here to produce Olympians. Uh, both of those opportunities are derived from having a, uh, a highly uh, productive and highly successful collegiate athletics experience. And with regard to the summer games, about 85% of those athletes are coming through a college program of one sort or another. Uh, so the, our, our Olympic team is uh, just over 500 members. Uh, and for us to have uh, 93 members participating in, in the games will be uh, really, really something special for us. Um, we've also, uh, we've, we've got big programs in this league. Um, we've had 531 academic All-Americans over the life of the league. We've got 16 or 18,000 uh, plus or minus student athletes. And uh, you know, we, had, we had almost 1,000 kids that had a four point last year. Uh, now, you know, it, it gets lost in, in us trying to beat each other's brains out every day on the playing surfaces, but um, th this is, a, this is a, an enterprise within higher education and it uh, generates a lot of revenue and it uh, sometimes puts people in the Olympic ranks and it sometimes puts people in the professional ranks and, and uh, most of our student athletes uh, as the NCAA ad says, are going pro in something other than their sport. But uh, we have uh, we've done great, uh, a lot of good for a lot of young people, and uh, they are out making a difference in the world. And, and uh, I'm very proud to be associated with that kind of an organization. I, I think we're I think we're doing it exceedingly well. Having said that, um, there there are some things wrong with the collegiate athletics too. Um, I, there are an awful lot of things that are right, but over uh, the, the coming years, uh, one of the things that attracted me to a commissioner's position is that it uh, gives one the opportunity to have more of an influence on the national agenda. And, uh, and I think uh, to the extent we can, we need to retain and improve upon the things that we're doing, doing well. But uh, there are also some troubling signs, and, and we need to work hard to get ourselves in a position where um, we can we can improve upon the things that um, are uh, are not where they ought to be. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see us bring increasing uh, increasing transparency to it. I think we need to I think we need to keep the score. We need to be vigilant about making sure we pay attention to the score, and then we need to be making sure that we're holding people accountable. And, we do that as a conference, but we also do it uh, uh, on a national basis too. And uh, I, I think there's there's much to be much to be gained. And, and uh, there are some of our high-profile sports where all the best parts of college athletics and all the worst parts of college athletics are are embodied in in that uh, in that context. And so uh, there's. Uh, there's plenty of work to be done. Uh, I think we're uniquely positioned to uh, to have a hand in what intercollegiate looks like, intercollegiate athletics looks like in the in the coming decades, and, and uh, I am I am very excited to to be a part of that dialogue. Now, having said all that, uh, we're we're here to to uh, begin the uh, the football season, and uh, this conference has. 
an amazing football heritage. Uh, it's going to be going to be fun to get out to the venues. Uh, I've been on every campus. Uh, the uh, uh, the one that I've been to uh, least is Baylor, and the only only time I was there that I can recall was uh, a time when I went onto the campus for Hayden Fry's uh, induction into the Baylor Hall of Fame. And I picked up the Friday paper, the school newspaper, and there was nothing on the front page about Hayden Fry's induction into the Baylor Hall of Fame. And I, I was uh, astounded that it wasn't. And then I began to read the, um, read the, the uh, articles on the front page and found that it was the first um, weekend where dancing was going to be allowed on the Baylor campus. And needless to say, uh, the, uh, the football Hall of Fame induction got, uh, got put on a back burner. But, uh, but Baylor is a, is a good example of, um, of how you can build a program around some special people and really have a lot of fun doing it the right way with, with in college football. Uh, the year they had last year was, was truly extraordinary. And as we go into this season, you wonder who it's going to be next. Uh, there, uh, one of the remarkable things about our league is every team in the league has been in the postseason uh, in recent years. There aren't many conferences that can say that. That, that really, uh, what makes a great conference is great competition every Saturday. And uh, we, are, we are solving from top to bottom. Um, and there are lots of difficult venues to go into. Um, the competition is terrific uh, every Saturday, and um, and we compete exceedingly well within our league. But we also compete exceedingly well against the, the rest of college football. Uh, it's, we have the uniqueness this year of having uh, the start of the season with uh, with three conference champions in our league. In, West Virginia and TCU and, and also Oklahoma State. So uh, I don't I don't know that that's ever happened in the history of college football that uh, three conference champions have all commenced the season um, having won the previous year. Uh, we we had we had six teams win ten games last year. That's uh, that's what I'm talking about when I say competition every day. Uh, more Heisman Trophy winners over the last 15 years than anybody else, and uh, at 95 percent consensus, uh, all Americans. Uh, the talent pool in the Big 12 Conference takes a back seat to uh, to no organization. <clears throat> it uh, is going to be interesting to see if um, that competition uh, shows itself early in the uh, in the preseason. Uh, as we talk about the postseason and how it's structured and what we would like to do with it, um, one of the things that is factual is that the, the regular season football is the best in any sport in college athletics. Uh, but when we talk about that, we're really talking about the months of October. 